tell you something about these built-in errors, the errors that come with Python, so that when they appear in your programs, you'll know exactly what they mean, and you don't have to, you know, waste time trying to find out what they are and, 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 and how they happened. So we're going to talk about a few errors. We're going to talk about the index error and what it means, a key error, and name error. These types of error happened when you access something that didn't exist or, or in the wrong way. We're going to look at attribute error, which is fairly related. And then we look at not implemented error. This is an error that you can use. That can be really handy. We're going to look at runtime error, quite a generic error. Then we're going to look at also syntax error. This happens when you mess up uh, writing Python code. You don't write uh, proper Python. We're going to look at indentation error and tab error. And these happens these happen when you uh, this mess up with the spaces or tabs or, or when you mix them together. We're going to look at type error and value error. And these happen when you give the wrong values or values of the wrong type to some built-in functions. Then we're going to look at import error and when that happens. And we're also going to briefly talk about deprecation warning and how you can use that. So the index error. The index error happens when you do something like this. The first three lines, by the way, are just the Python introduction type thing when you when you run Python on your console. I'll teach you how to do that in a couple of sections time. Basically, we've defined friends as Rolf and Anne, and then we've accessed friends2. But of course, friends2 doesn't exist because friends only has two things, 0 and 1. When you access friends2, that's an index error because you accessed an index that didn't exist. In this case, it tells you that the list index was out of range. You're trying to access 2, but you only go up to 1. And this is a type of index error. Notice how the traceback tells you where the file, uh, the, the file, the line, and the module or function that you ran it in. And in this time, in this case, because I'm running Python uh, in interpreter mode, that means you're just running Python interactively. It executes as soon as you type, so the file is just the 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 thing I'm typing. That's that's what this file is called. The line is number one because again every line is number one in interpreter mode, and the module is just the module I'm running with, and that just means when it says in module, that just means you are running the the line directly. You're not going through any functions. So this is an index error. It happens when you access an index that didn't exist or an index that is otherwise incorrect. Then we've got key error, and this is fairly similar to the one we saw earlier. But now we have the proper code, movie name, movie director, and movie release. However, it should be year. And remember, in our milestone one, we used the year key. And let's assume that we've used the year key for this bit of code as well. What we'll get then is this nice traceback. Again, what we've got now is a key error. And the description of this key error is pretty terrible. I don't like this description because it just says the key that you misused. So it says key error, release. Um, not terribly helpful, but now you know that you've used the release key at some point where you shouldn't have. And then if the traceback is good, it'll give you which line that error happened. You've used it here in movie release. And then again, it, it says, and this line was inside show movie details. Show movie details was executed as show movie details with movie inside it, and that happened inside show movies. That was executed inside the menu, and the menu was executed inside the module or the file that you executed. Notice how all of these things are inside a file called app.py, because that's uh, what our file was called in milestone one. So the key error happens when you use a key incorrectly, or otherwise the key doesn't exist, but movie is a dictionary. Okay, so we've got movie being a dictionary, and then we accessed the incorrect key. If movie was a list, remember from the last video, we would get a different type of error. We also have name error. And the name error happens, as we saw earlier uh, in the last video, when the variable is not defined. So here, I've just launched Python, and I said print hello, the variable hello. But of course, hello is not defined, so I get a name error that says name hello is not defined. Of course, print of the string hello would still work because the string hello is just a set of characters and numbers or symbols, and Python doesn't evaluate it to a variable at all. So that would work, 
but printing the variable hello doesn't work. This is actually a really common error for my students, where they forget to, or you guys forget to, put the quotation marks around the string. It happens to everybody, and just remember, if you get a name error for something that is in a print, just check whether it needs quotation marks around it. That's, that's a fairly popular thing, so just keep your eyes out. Let's also look at attribute error. Attribute error is pretty popular when you're starting to deal with objects. In this code here, we've got my friends list, which has three strings, Rolf, Jose, and Charlie. And then we've got some friends that are nearby, Rolf and Anna. And notice these two are lists, and then I'm doing friends.intersection of friends nearby. Intersection is something we can do with sets, if you recall. We looked at this earlier on in the course. It is not something you can do with lists. So then you get an attribute error. The list object has no attribute intersection. It, you, can't, you can't do intersection because a list doesn't know what it is. Uh, so this is a nicer error message. It tells you what object you try to use, in this case a list object, and it tells you what you try to do that you cannot do. In this case, use the intersection attribute. Okay. This is a pretty nice error. When you get it, you see, okay, I messed up. I used the wrong thing there. We've got not implemented error, and this is an error that you won't be seeing very often, but it's an error you can actually use. And here's how you can use it. Here's, we've got a class that has an init method, a constructor, and it takes in a username and a password, and then it sets them, and then it's got a login method. But we've not worked on the login method yet, so it doesn't work yet. Instead of returning none or doing nothing, we can instead raise a not implemented error. And this is the syntax for raising an error. We're going to look at this in more detail in the next couple of videos. And then inside the brackets, you can put a small description saying something like, this feature has not been implemented yet. What's going to happen is when somebody calls this method, they're going to get an error. And it's going to say, not implemented error, this feature has not been implemented yet. And then it's going to say, when you called user.login. So it's a pretty nice error to raise when you've not yet gotten round to implement something. A runtime error. Runtime error is a pretty generic error, and um, it's, it's not terribly clear when it happens. Uh, I've seen it a couple of times, um, but it's not an error you'll be seeing very often at all. This is essentially a base error, a base class, and other errors inherit from this one. Other errors extend this one to be runtime errors. A runtime error is just an error that happens when you're running your program, so that's basically anything. We've got syntax error. Syntax error is when we mess up on Python. So here we've got somebody messing up and defining their class user. Can you see? Can you spot the, the missing thing? For me, this is like a big blank where something should be. But of course, for you, it may not be so obvious to, for now. And as you get more familiar with Python, as you program more and you encounter more of these errors, this is going to start becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger missing thing, uh, which is the colon. The colon's missing at the end of the class. This is illegal syntax because you've got class user and then it expects a colon afterwards, so you'll get a syntax error, the saying illegal syntax. Then we've got indentation error, fairly related, also a problem with syntax in Python, and the error could arise from something like this. Uh, you define a function at two, x and y, you put a colon after, and remember, the block of the function has to be indented. It has to have at least two spaces in front, preferably four spaces. But this return x plus y doesn't have any spaces in front. So you'd get an indentation error. And it would say something like uh, block indentation block expected after function definition or something like that. So basically, you can do this if uh, you want. You can indent and put pass. And that just means this function does nothing. And then you can put the return x plus y at the bottom. But of course, this, this would also be an error. Do you know which error it would be? I hope you got that. It would be a name error. Because of course, x and y would not be defined. They are only defined within the function. Remember the concept of scope. They do not live outside the function. So as soon as the function ends, x and y no longer exist. You're using them here outside the function because the function body is only the indented block. So this will give you a name error. You're trying to use x and y, two things that are not defined. 
Then we've got a tab error. A tab error is a pretty frequent error when you switch between editors. So just be careful when you're switching between editors that this doesn't happen. Here we've got a add to function. And then the indented body has been indented with four spaces. That's what that little square bracket means. And that square bracket on the, on, the, on the bottom of the line. Space, 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 return x plus y. So there's four spaces there, totally legitimate Python um, syntax there. You can indent using four spaces. But then notice how the pow function has been defined using a tab character at the start instead of four spaces. And Python doesn't really like it when you mix and match indentation types. So um, I'm actually not sure if this would work. Um, but certainly within a function, do not mix and match uh, types. Uh, try to not mix and match uh, indentation types at all in any of your programs. Decide now whether you want to use tabs or spaces and stick to that, at least within a project. So again, these are spaces, these are tabs. Don't mix them. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, let's go back to this and I will quickly just mention the um, pow function, what it does, because I don't think we've encountered this syntax before. We've got um, two arguments, n and x, and then it's returning n times times x. And times times in Python just means to the power of. And so that's n raised to the x. Uh, for example, 2 to the 3 is 8, and so forth. Um, pretty nifty syntax there in Python. I don't think we've encountered that. Just wanted to mention it. Let's go over to a type error. The type error is pretty common. And a type error can happen when you do something like this. In the first line, we're adding 5 plus 5. And that gives us 10, as we would expect. In the second line, we're adding hi plus ha. And it's giving us hi ha, as you would expect, because it's concatenating the strings together. And then we're doing something that you should not do, which is add a string and a number, and an integer. Do not do that, for that will be a type error. You've given the plus function, which is a function, um, two types that it does not support. So uh, both of these things should be the same type, and you've given it an int and a string, and it says unsupported operand types. By the way, the plus uh, symbol is actually a function. It's a dunder function like um, len. We will look into that later on, at how you can use it. But the int and the string objects have the plus dunder function defined, and it, it says that you cannot add them two together. So then you get a type error. Notice that you get the type error because somebody defined the int and str classes as raising this type error when you pass in different types. It doesn't just happen magically. Somebody has actually written the code to give you this error when you do this. And so just remember, there's no magic here. It's all programming. Somebody has written the code that, that raises this error. Let's move on to value error. Value error is also very common. It's when you, it happens when you give built-in functions a value of the correct type but, uh, sorry, a value of the correct type, potentially, but incorrect value. So here's an example. We are turning into an int a string, which is normally a fine thing to do, but the string cannot contain decimal places. If it does, it says, hey, you should really convert this into a float, um, and, and that's what you should do. So here we're calling the int function with 20.5 as a string, and it says, value error, invalid literal for int with base 10. 20.5. 20.5 is not something you can give the int function. Normally, only built-in functions will raise a value error. If you want to raise value errors, I recommend that you create your own errors, which we're going to look at later on in this section. Finally, we've got import error. An import error is also really popular and is a big pain in the ass. And here's when it happens. You've got an import blog inside app.py. And then you've got blog.py say that from app imports menu. Let's imagine you want to run the menu inside blog or um, you know maybe app has some sort of variable you want to import or something. So what's happening here is that app is importing blog, blog is importing app. And what happens when you import? Well, you go over to the file you're imported and you run through it quickly, define the functions, uh, execute any imports and so forth. And once that's done, you go back to the original file and you continue from right after the import. So importing blog actually runs blog.py. 
What happens when you run blog.py? Well, it has to go over to app.py and run that. The first line there is import blog, so it has to go back to blog and import app, and then it goes back to blog and then so forth. This is a big ass circle, and what happens is, um, yeah, circular imports. This is what they're called, importing one file which imports the same file. You'll get a circular import. And this doesn't necessarily have to happen from between two files. You can have file A that imports file B, that imports file C, that imports file A. And so you can have a circular import with many files, and it can be a bit of a hassle. Uh, so just be careful with your imports. You'll get an import error, and it will say something around the lines of circular import uh, here. So be careful. If you get an import error, ask a question in the course Q&A. We'll be very happy to help you out. Finally, let's look at deprecation warning. A deprecation warning is, as it says there, a warning, not an error. Uh, however, Python treats it the same way. So if you, if you produce one, if you raise one, uh, your program will still crash. But it's meant to mean, hey, um, something wrong happened here. Uh, this, if, uh, this thing that you try to do is deprecated. And what does deprecated mean? Deprecated means that it is no longer the best way of doing something. There is now a better way of doing whatever it is you're trying to do. Let's look at this example code. We've got a user class. And at the top, we've got from database import database. The user class has a constructor. And then it has two methods, a register method, which is an instance method that writes to the database, the username and password of the user. Then it also raises a deprecation warning. And it says, user register still works, but is deprecated. Then we've got a class method that is called register user. And that takes in a username and password and writes to the database, the username and password and returns an object of type user. I like this second one better. That's why I said this example. But nonetheless, it was just to show you that you can raise a deprecation warning in any of your methods to tell whomever uses it that, hey, this uh, is no longer the accepted way of doing things. But, there is a but, often you won't be raising any of these exceptions except possibly the deprecation warning, probably not even that one. You'll normally be raising not implemented error if you are sort of working on something. But you won't be raising many of these. You should create your own exceptions with even better names. And we will look at exactly what that means and what a better name is and how you can create your own exceptions. So let's look at that right now real quickly. But we're just going to go over it again in this video and give you a couple examples so that you know in, in which scenarios you should be raising errors. And also, I'm going to introduce a new piece of Python syntax that I think is pretty cool. So let's right click our project that I've just created in PyCharm and create a new Python file. And again, I'm going to call it app.py. This is a pretty popular name for your first or your most important file in Python that you're going to run. So you can right click it and run it. Normally, this file will be called app.py or run.py. It's, it, it's just a name for your main most important file. Let's say we have a code that is for a garage. and it stores cars and you can add cars to it. So let's define a class garage that has an init method. And uh, it defines self.cars to be equal to an empty list. By the way, notice how in an attempt to reduce any indentation or tab errors, I have told PyCharm to show me any uh, hidden characters or invisible characters. You've got these small, tiny dots that you can barely see uh, without um, being in a video. You can certainly not see them very well on video, but you've also got these lines here. So you've got these dots that are very small. I'm going to zoom in in the video just so you can see it. And you've got this line here. The line tells you where an indentation level begins uh, or where it is maintained. The dots show you the spaces. So you know these are not tabs, they're spaces. Okay, so if we were to add another line here, notice how now we've got a three line, a three uh, line long uh, gray line here that tells us that the indentation is maintained for all of this. Okay, and so this garage has an init method. It has a len method, uh, and that returns len of self dot cars, and also it's got an add car method that takes in a car that we're going to add as an argument. 
However, we've not yet had the chance of uh, working on this too much, so what we're going to do is we're going to print this method is a work in progress. This is obviously not the right way to go about it, as you know now. But then let's say that um, we are using this garage, so we're going to say Ford garage is garage, and then Ford dot add car um, Fiesta, and then we want to print the len of Ford. Now, this method here is going to print out something out of the screen. But if we were not really paying attention, if we were, for example, saving this thing here to a file or to a database, we may not realize that this is printing something out. We would just see uh, that this is zero every time. Let's run our app. And as you can see here, it says this method is a work in progress, first of all, and then it just says zero. No matter how many cars we add, all we're going to see is this method is a work in progress over and over again. And if we were saving this length to a database or to a file or somewhere, it would always be zero. If you run it, then you may wonder, hey, what's going on here? And then you're going to have to actually run the program manually, like so in, in PyCharm, to see the printouts. And then you'd see, ah, okay, this method, this, this code isn't working yet. So instead, of course, we can raise an error. We can raise, and all you do is raise, and then type a not implemented error. And then you've got brackets, so you're creating a new not implemented error instance. This is a class. You're creating a new object of type not implemented error, and you're raising that. Inside the brackets, you can put a small message. We, uh, we're going to say we can't add cars to the garage yet. Now, when you run the app, which I'm going to do by pressing on the top right here, you get your nice trace back. Then it says, not implemented error. We can't add cars to the garage yet. Then it tells you where that error happened. Raise not implemented error here. We did it manually. It says line 9 in add car. So that's line 9 of our code inside the add car function. Now, where was this function called? Where, where did the, the, this function originally happen? On line 13, here, in for.addCarFiesta. So as you can see, the error happened here. Inside this function, this function was called here. So it tells you all the functions and, and parts of your file where this error has, has gone through, from being raised up until it reached the file level. So that's two, two places right now. So this is much better, because now when we run the program, it's going to crash. We're not going to save anything to the database, and we're going to see, oh, okay, uh, it crashed, let's investigate. We would see that a not implemented error was raised, uh, and that's all good. So this is how you raise an error. You use the keyword, then you create a new object. You can put something inside the brackets, which will be the message. Let's say we add another class. That is going to be a class of type car. And that's going to take a make and a model as, um, as uh, parameters. And then it's also going to have a wrapper function, of course, because you always want these things. And it's going to return a car with self.make and uh, self.model, like so. So this is just a representation of a car. Remember the wrapper dunder function. Um, is, you can print out the car object, and it's going to print something that looks like this. Okay. Now, the add car function here should only accept the parameter being a car object. So, how do you do that? Well, pretty, pretty straightforward, actually. There is a built-in function in Python called isInstance. Is instance tells you whether the variable that you give it is an instance of the type that you give it. So this is the variable, car. This is the type, which is the class, car with a capital C. So if not is instance, so if this is not, if car is not an instance of car, we're going to raise a type error. And we're going to say, try to add a car class name to the garage, but you can only add car objects. 
So it's a bit of a longer message there. Um, and all I've done is formatted the string and said car.class.name. That's the name of the class of the variable. So if this was a string, this would print out str. If this was a class, if this was, if this was a car, it would print out car. And this is just a nice bit of a construct that you can access for essentially any variable. Uh, this gives you the class of the variable, and this gives you the name of the class. So we try to add that to the garage, but you can only add car objects. Uh, and then, of course, we're not going to raise an not implemented error. And now here we can say self.cars.append car. And you may wonder, well, why do you not put this in an else? You don't have to. If the car is not an instance of the car class, we're going to raise the error, and that's going to crash a program. We are never going to reach this line if that happens. If, however, it is an instance, it's not going to go in here, and it's just going to go here. So you don't need the else for anything, because the only path, there are only two paths. One where this doesn't run, because you raise the error, and the other one where this runs, and that's where you want it to run. So that's sufficient. So once again, let's try to uh, add this string car. And notice how now we get a nice trace back here that says try to add an str to the garage, but you can only add car objects. That's a, I think that's a pretty nice error message. So what can you do? Well, you can create a new car object. Let's say car. This is going to be a Ford Fiesta. And then you're going to add that car, which is a car object, into the add car function. Again, the value of the car variable is a car object. And that's what you are teleporting over to this car variable. Okay, so the car variable, the value of the car variable is now being assigned to this car variable here. And then you're going to use that inside here. So now we can run it. And it all works. We can print the len of Ford. And you'll see that one gets printed out, which is pretty nice. This is raising errors in Python. It's really straightforward. All you have to do is when you want an error to happen, raise it, create an object of it. You remember the brackets. And inside the brackets, if you want, it's totally optional, you can put a nice message for when the error gets raised. The, the person who's writing the code knows what happened. Errors are most useful for developers. Of course, if your users, if, if somebody was downloading this code over the internet and saying, oh, I'm going to run my garage, of course, it's a bit basic for that. But if somebody was downloading your code and using it, they encountering a type error may not be terribly useful for them because it doesn't tell them anything. They're not developers. So errors are most useful for developers. When you are writing code or when somebody else is helping you write code or working on a team, having nice errors can be really helpful because then when you make a mistake or you do something incorrectly, you'll quickly get an error and you'll be able to fix it. If you don't get errors and instead you print things out like we did earlier on, you may never find out that this is not working until you see that the program doesn't do what you were expecting. So raise errors, use them, and they'll be your best friend in no time.